what, I, what I'm going to have you do is a fingertip extension. This guy puts his hand on me. Puts his hand on me. I want you to hold. Got that? But what I want you to do, what I want you to do, as long as he's flat, I can't do a thing. I can peel his little finger. You've been there for that class. But what I want to do is dip my body back. As I go into a cat, I've created an opening here. Got that? And as I dip back, this will drop. If I want to hurt him more as he pushes, I dip my body back. Am I correct? Yes, sir. The whole hand is going to wipe out on me. So it's, it's uh, I push against. you got to get your body out from under here. Depending where he had his hand on you, we sometimes do it with this, or we sometimes do it with the turn of the kata. This looks like the turn of a kata, but as I start to turn, I can just pull his elbow into it. And pull him into his own finger joints. I want you to be careful when you do that, because it does dumb the entire hand. And if you really want to be nasty as you did that, as you pull in, you just do this, and you punch him right here. I guarantee you, he's going to go down and he won't use his arm. Because you have all of this stretched out. And all of these stretched out. You're basically doing this to the guy, but getting his support out of the way. Even just a gap. And you don't even need that much of a gap. If you do it, it shouldn't be noticeable. I'm only doing this so you can see what's happening. In other words, he puts his hand against you. It's all in this split second. You touch and go like that. Just pull in. You have the joints. You can do it sometimes with your finger. If he tries to get away from you, you just catch the blow. Well, here, same thing. Same thing. We're fiddling around with the fingers. Everybody flames like that. Stretch them out. Stretch them out. In every V, a V is big. In every V, reach in and feel <coughs> on yourself how it's soft right here. I don't care how much strength you have in your hand. Feel it soft here, soft here, soft here. Right here, feel here. Push right in there, there's a little hole. On yourself. Feel it right there. So where I am? That pressure point releases that knuckle. That's why when you were doing the knuckle lock, you were so successful. I want you to know you've got to be on a pressure point. You're not just on a knuckle, you're on a release the knuckle. You've got a lock going that there's a threat to release that knuckle, so that's why the body will follow along to save that knuckle. Underneath here, there's a pressure point. Push up in that way, and you feel it. And it holds that knuckle. You feel it right here. When you get someone here, let me use you. If he's pointing a finger at me, and I go here, I'm touching that pressure point. When I get him in a lock, I have that pressure point. When I go like this, I'm aiming it against it. And I'm releasing it. And it's the threat to release it that causes him to spin. Got that? Now, in between here, in between here, is a pressure point, and that one controls that knuckle and that knuckle. That one controls that knuckle and that knuckle. That one controls that knuckle and that knuckle. What I'm going to have you do is, here you stand up there. Get a guy like this, I mean strong hand, and you'll see how hard it is. You can't just bend somebody's finger over backwards. But I want you to put a finger in here, and you'll go like that, and you go down. Yes, right here. In other words, in the, some people have flexible fingers. I'm double jointed with my fingers. So I mean, you can bend me all the way back, and I still won't feel the pain to get it back. However, I will if you create a base. So you create a base. When I start to bend the finger, I want to put a base to it. My body. If I take it down, it'll be, it'll be my cat stance. Now, if I want to cause pain, we have pain, we take pain. But it's the base, you take a pain. 
you have somebody that has good flexible fingers. There's one guy over here on flexible fingers, that's why I brought it up. He bend his fingers all the way back to here before still no reaction. Keep in mind, this is only, only to show you where it's at and how easy it works. So you get confidence in it. If you have confidence in these pressure points, you just do them, down they go. Is that simple? So I want you to know there's one there, there, or I can be over here, or I can be here, or I can be an either finger here, and it's just in that vein. Got it? And again, we wouldn't do it out here like this. I'd throw a base in here. Because in a street situation, I don't want to find out how flexible it is before I get paid, because you're going to hit me. There's a reason, there's a reason you were doing this to me. Tell me what you're going to do. Take it right here. Hey! All right off the bat. So once you get that finger, that's the motion. Well, it's a small circle. Lock this hand as if you're going to punch the guy. When you lock, cock. Cock it back, bring it towards you, and don't be afraid to twist. Any joint, you've seen it when I do the open hand. We do this. Got it? This is a joint lock. Resist me. Give me strength. With a lot of strength, because he's a strong man, I can eventually get the joint locked, but in the meantime, he can hit me. He can hit, tap my arm over there. He can tap that arm, tap it again. But if I take the joint and do this, now he goes to tap my arm, he goes down. In other words, I don't take a joint that way. I take it that way to get control of the person. Got it? When I take a finger, I take a finger. But if I really want to be nasty, I do this. Not quite that much, I'm overdoing it so you see. In other words, when I get a finger, I lock it, I go here, and then I, I, I give it this. The joint cannot take that habit. So you, it takes a lot of practice. You lock, I go in towards me. Then I, I lock this thumb in that hand position, and as I lock my thumb, that starts to put the twist back that way on that joint. And that's any twist of one of his joints has his body jump like that. Just any minor twist has his body jump, jump, jump. All three knuckles I did it to. One, two, three. His body will rise, drop. It'll try, it's trying to save the joint from being broken. It's your safety device. So once I get you in the finger lock, no matter which side it gets on, I catch the finger, I lock it, I bring it in, but then I reverse it. So we I'll tell you another thing we experimented with, and you higher bucks can experiment with it. <clears throat> but when you create a base, I'll give you a little secret here. If, if you take him and you use the cycle of destruction, got it? What am I on? Metal. Right? If I make my base be fire, it's going to hurt him. I didn't even touch him, he was young. I didn't even get to him yet. And he was ready to yell. Because I've created the cycle of destruction. And we've been experimenting with that, but we're treading on thin ice. We watch because we don't want to injure anybody. But if I grab you, whether it's the foot, the leg, the arm, the hand, if I close you to my areas of my body, they coincide with the cycle of destruction, the intensity of pain on him is tenfold. And I don't even do nothing. I, nothing. If I get him here, look. He feels, look how far i got to bend him back. But watch when I enter my heart point eight, or fire. And I'm not even touching yet. I'm using my chi flow. And the chi flow coming out of heart point eight is going to cause him. Is that serious pain? Yes. And it's real serious pain. So be careful when you do that. But when you touch somebody and you touch them to you, you're still doing the cycle of destruction. When you do center line, this is the heart. If I cock the hand and bend it, he goes down. If I bend it, if I aim it over that way, he goes down with not as much pain. If I aim it over that way, he goes down with not as much pain. This is what channel? Heart. 
If I aim his heart at his heart, he's down with more pain faster. You understand that? In other words, I take his heart channel and I aim it at his heart. That's another one Wally told me he'd love to punch somebody off. What's really going to happen if I keep it in punch? Center line. And really continue to hit you. I think it'd kill you. I really do. I just gave you can't experiment. But I mean, <laughs> 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 I'm going to use that. So you can use that as fire. You understand? So be careful, your points. you got to learn how to use the least amount of effort. When you've got the channel, and you've got him in a lock, and you aim it at the organ, and which is named after, what's the difference of the intensity of pain? Got that? Lung. I get it like this. But the intensity of pain, when I take that lung and go to his lung, and the closer I get to his lung, the more he'll dance. And I'm not doing any more effort. I'm just aiming it at his own lung. You keep it triple warmer, you go for center line. Keep in mind that if you go center line, or if you go for the organ, what you're doing, if you're after the large intestine, and you pass him down towards his own large intestine, his body will react this way. It will not want his large intestine to be locked back and contact his large intestine while he's in that pain. <laughs> it, it's backing up that organ's energy, but you're also going and going to connect two of his extreme points. And his body doesn't want it to happen with that kind of reaction. Fast. Got that? Rule of thumb, one finger, one finger on any body, one finger on any body, your opponent goes down. Do you understand that? This is the rule, the guideline. One finger. You know the minute you grab a guy, you got one or more fingers. Am I correct? They can resist you, but you're resisting. No, you can resist me. You guys slow or what? No. <laughs> when they resist, no. When they resist, when they resist, you got one finger. When they're going to resist, they go down. You don't really take them up. Take them over, but down. So that's what we call rule of thumb. It's just what to remember when you grab a finger, he goes down. The faster you cock the small circle, the faster he goes down. Two or more fingers. He does not go down. The nerve point is not up. affected. Even though the nerve is there, he's not going down. But the minute two or more fingers, I am to automatically cock his hand up. And now watch when I touch the nerve point. Down he goes. And actually, that hurts you more in there, doesn't it? Because what happens, the minute I cock your hand like that, I've added your body weight to my technique. And your subconscious reads that and fires those nerves up. It says, wait a second, we can now lose our fingers. Dance. <laughs> well, that's what goes on real quick. So you understand rule of thumb on self-defense. Easy to do. You practice it. One finger, down he goes. Two fingers, up he goes. Then, down he goes. Now, for you to do that, big, strong individual. If he's much stronger than you, you treat one finger as if it's two. If he's a lot stronger than you, you might have to do that in case you get some big, strong individual. The minute I would touch a finger, and, and you give me resistance, I can feel within a split second that I can't put you down. Now I can put him down because it's a one finger and I'm on a pressure point. But I'm going to pretend I can. I'm pretending I'm you and it's your hands in there. And you go like this and you, and you go, wow, he's strong. The minute you feel that, you aim that this way, up. And then you have lung. You pass it towards his lung. 
and then you throw him down. And you whip him around like that. The way you aim the person's palm is the way he goes. Got that? We, we aim the palm down and drop down, he goes down. If I aim the palm this way, he goes that way. If I aim it this way, he goes that way. That's how they get the dance around. When I aim it up, he'll go up. If he's down on the floor, and I want him out, and I really want him to come up, what do I do with the palm? Turn it up. Every joint right up in your body is basically the same. This is just like your knee. This is just like your knee. Just like the elbow. Every joint will be the same. And you can control. You see my little X in book two over the knee? Yeah, my second book? There's an X for pressure points across the knee. Well, there's an X across the knuckle. When you lock onto somebody's finger, you don't let them get away. Go after the closest pressure point. Now, you can even do it to this knuckle. I have a, a girl down in my school has a very little hand, and she can drop big people right here. I can't because my hand is too big. Yesterday I covered overlapping pressure points. Well, you'll overlap this one easy. But if you have a little hand and he's got a big hand, your opponent, if you won't overlap You guys got the finger at you, and you catch it. We showed you how to manipulate back here. I use these points back here if I, if I just grab your whole hand. If I grab your whole hand, I'll, use, I'll, I'll try to get between the bones so I am down, right in between that flange. So I'll just grab and I'll toss your hand out that way and throw you down. Now the guy's got the finger at you, and you grab, you're level enough to be back at that knuckle. You can't always count if you get back to that knuckle. I'm going to show everybody. But what you want to do is get this knuckle. And you want to be right below it and release it. Right? Pretend this is a little knee. You have a pressure point here, here, even on the other side of that knuckle. I can slip up to here, other side of the knuckle, and drop it. And I'm on the far side of the knuckle because the nerve's coming out to monitor out here still, and you close in on it. I'm just doing it as lightly as I can so you can see it. But this is the way you would be, and you just get in here. You do not pull, and you do not push. You do this. Only J small circle. Everybody just take your hand and just tilt it. But what I want you to do is when he took that finger again, he should have already been grabbed. And since he was doing this to you, in your face, putting that finger, telling you what he's going to do to you, as you grab, put him in the lock here. So you're ready to hit him. Or manipulate or hold. So work on this, come on the outside. Try it. Somebody just said to me over at the lunch room, can I knock the guy out with this spear hand in the ribs? But his thumbs were like that. Weren't they, Anthony? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, his thumb was bent. When you bend your thumb for a chop hand, you cut off your energy there. Early on, people said, if you can only make one change in the martial arts, well, I'd want to make two. What would, what would that change be? That everybody straightens that thumb out. That'd be the change. If I could just... Push a buzzer and everybody all over the world wouldn't do this anymore. The martial arts would improve. You got that? When you do this, you cut off your energy there. You'll feel it. When you do that, the energy flows out. When you do that, you'll feel this muscle pull. Feel this muscle right here. That's the energy continuing. I can use that with meaning rich hand, Chop hand, spear hand, back hand, palm, and I will have the energy for every attack. If you look at Bobishi, they show the hand that way. 
They do not show it like that. That's a 600 year old text on how to make hand positions in the martial arts. If you arts. change into martial arts, it beat everybody straightening that thumb out. The second change would be everybody do a three quarter inch punch. A three quarter inch punch. Everybody does a full two inch punch, it's garbage, you all know that. I hit him with a, with a you know, tiny ribs. I can hit him like this all day long because I'm overlapping four ribs. But if I go to here, I'm on one rib, right? You don't want hit with that. If I punch like that, I am going to break a rib. If I punch like that, I'm not going to break anything. Solar plex is hidden in the sternum like that. If I hit like this, I'm overlapping. I get ribs on both sides stopping it. But if I go here, I'm right in that V, and I can hit him in there, and he's going to go down. So, I mean, why would anybody do these full first punches? I don't know. They, they taught that to children in 1914. That's why Americans got taught that. That was created for children so they couldn't hurt each other. That's in books. Go read some of the old books in the martial arts. They could go with the full twist punch so grade school kids couldn't hurt each other learning karate. And it got passed on to American servicemen because they didn't really want them to hurt the Oriental. Now, we told you to tilt the hand. What I want you to do, watch, come up. We're going to work on the thumb. People do this now, they shake hands. The thumb, yeah. Hey brother, how you doing? Sterling's good at this, right? <laughs> if you try to take the thumb, and you resist me, back like that, the way you do the finger, it does not work. Does everybody understand that? Because of the size of that joint. You form your chop hand and do this to the thumb, and you have a thumb. You form this hand that I'm showing you. You're here on the thumb. You want this joint. This joint's too strong. He can resist that joint. But he cannot resist that joint. And you only tilt it. You don't put him on the floor with it because he'll, he'll resist it. But you'll get enough of a tilt that you will have already been hit with your next technique or you will have closed the gap. In other words, you are here. This is what you want. See what I got? Here. In other words, that. Okay? People usually don't teach thumb locks because most people don't know what to do with them. And I didn't know what to do with them years ago. I got that from Wally J. I said to Wally, I you know, we lock this, and how to lock this, and how to lock this, and even how to get this, and how to do a wrist, and how to get the elbow. What about the thumb? And while he said, this, this is too strong. <coughs> Unless you're a big, powerful man, maybe, maybe you could do it on this young lady and get her in a thumb lock to make her yell uncle, but she can't do it to you. Once you get this thumb, this joint back here is too strong. But you pivot this, and look what you got going. And then you should have already hit him or did another technique. Because you're not going to take him far, and you don't try to use that technique to put him down. You just put him here to close. So you don't use that as your, your final move. The thumb lock, you just see, see what happens right away? Just right away. You're after this joint. You're after this joint. Understand that? You stay away from that joint. If anybody got a way to do that joint, let me know. Let me know. Difficult to do. And when you say you got a way to do it, I want to see this young lady doing it on the big strong guy. I want to see a big guy doing it on the little young lady. How would you push it in? No. Yeah, oh, they, oh they, 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 I know this better. Then you thumb. If they have the thumb bent, you can just hop to here like a pistol and, and drop it. But again, you're not using that joint. You're using this joint. You're using this joint. Right here. If a person bends his thumb like that in a fighting position, and he has his thumb bent, right there is where I'm going to chop it. Fight's over. <laughs> Chad Doolin will shake it out. I uh, brought it up, and he was down at this joint. You can release this joint. You can release this joint. Press right here, you'll feel the pressure point. Feel it, press in. Press in, you'll feel it, want to release it. And Police will use that, you ain't going to release that joint as easily. 
that joint does not release very easily. Got that? That's the strong joint. I'm not saying you can't release it, but there's not a little person in this room that's going to release that joint on a big person in this room, and that's the way my pressure points work. If they don't work on somebody bigger than you, we don't want to do it. Your opponent's usually bigger than you, giving you all this type of thing. Going to do it. So what I want you to do this time is go into the thumb, into the thumb lock. Stay away from this joint. If you're doing this joint, you're incorrect. I want you to go after that joint. I don't want you to do anything except the hand position I showed you and tilt like that. It's one of Mr. Song's exercises for the heart meridian. Lung meridian. Lung meridian. That's right. Correct me. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Lung. Yes. Yes, I should have known that. Yes. Thinking about what I'm teaching. Here, and I don't want this joint. He can resist me, but I want to come here. And I'm on this knuckle, and I just tilt like this. And actually, the more I tilt, the more I do songs exercise. <laughs> I'm strengthening my love. <laughs> yes. So what I want you to do is this, tilt, on that joint, try it. All you do is this, and the more you do it, the faster he goes. Get in here, so he wants to resist this. He wants to resist the normal thumb holes. This guy shake hands with his hand, hey. And the minute they do that, if you go for this, they, they give me strength. You got strength. You lock up on this. Just put it here. It's only for a split second. Just do this. One split second. And you close. You don't waste much time. Because they can get out of this or they can move on. It's only a split second done and you've got to do whatever's next. Diving at you and taking you to the ground was covered years ago in the cottage. That's the meaning of this move. Hey, but you watch any the tournament and you see somebody go like this, and he'll tell you he's after the groin. He's after the groin, and he'll even want to tell you he's ripping it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to see him rip it out, he ain't gonna rip it out. But what I'm telling you is people go to dive at you today. And they tuck their head in. And they go down and they reach out to try to get your legs. Now you stay that way for me. This is the angle and direction for the nose. Am I correct? That's the angle and direction. Down. In and down. When he dives at me, I'm in and down. He has added my angle and direction. Understand. That's what the average person doesn't know about the martial arts. If he says this is a groin move, there's not a chance in the world he'll use that. I'm not going to take a guy this big, go like this. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he bought me a drink. <laughs> but if he dies, this is going to remember the old rich hand. <laughs> This can hit him in low butter bunny, take him out. The real dangerous one is bladder 10, is it? 10, or six, you're actually talking about do 16. Okay. That's it, that could kill him. That will kill him. Maybe, I won't say will, but could. <laughs> but there, there's a, a better chance in a will than not. Though. Yes. Yes. So you have to be careful. 2% not. Yeah. Yeah, 2% not. But. As the guy dives, as he dives, as he dives at you, that's why this move was created in the kata. Because you're gonna hit. You're gonna go in the nose and you can't miss. The nose is there, and this got you going with the right angle and direction to hit here. Feel it? I didn't want to hit him any harder than I hit you people standing up and I'd shake that off. And I didn't hit him back here. Alright, yeah. Actually, I hit him lighter than I did you people, but because he's bent over, 
<clears throat> he has all of the, when you bend over to take somebody down, all these nerves are straight. You have a say something that comes out and goes like this. And that's also a guy, a guy's diving at you. You hit, but you do this. You people know my head turn theory. They can't resist that. If he's diving at you, and you even smack him on subject five, are we dizzy? <laughs> and you throw him. And if he's big and heavy, his weight will be against him. If he's a big guy like this guy, and this guy's here, and I readjust his head that direction, he has to go because I'm trying to save his neck, his body and flip. And you let him get close to you and then just go here. And that's why Kata Seisan does this. So at the end of Seisan, you come out and you come here. And right here where my fingers are is a gallbladder point, and it is going to drop. <laughs> it's going to drop. And now what's really great, if we drop him, if we take his foot, and we only need to touch that and go up here, <laughs> and the pain is intense. Is that right, Head? <laughs> In fact, I actually have taught that to police because they use it to flip people over. If I really put pain here, and then put pain here, you want to flip. You want to flip. Because these two are allergic to each other, so to say. They're the same as doing these two on the hand, and cocking the hand to this. So you have here, and you have here, and you can do it with one hand by grabbing under his ankle and letting this knuckle sink in, and then putting a the thumb here and turning. So if you're on the ground fighting and he pivots you anywhere here or has a foot near you, you don't always have to get up to his head and his neck. I don't care if he's got a foot coming up over your head or trying to get you in an arm lock with the, with the foot down like that, you only need to go to here. Because he can't get you in that kind of a lock without this being stretched. <coughs> he can't be down in the ground with that leg out and trying to kick you or trying to pin you without stretching these nerves. If you want to add more pain to it, you do the twist I told you about earlier. He was going to jump just from that. You do the <laughs> twist and then you apply the pain. And I only applied the pain on this one since I did so much twist, but I can also apply the pain there, or I can twist and apply the pain on both. Making triangle in base equal length of your leg. If you're not if you're more flexible, you're creating a more straight angle. If left, you can do it like this, but basically like this. So you move me. Try to feel the center of weight, how it transfers, because this can be critical to cutting knee, to, uh, cutting leg to knees. As soon as you got leg to leg with somebody, this is stay down. And keep your body straight and vertical. Okay, now we're reverse. Now knee goes in. In, see from out, in. That's another part of cutting technique. really good for your legs, particularly for knee training. And try to make it figure it circular movement. You see? It's non-stop. That's also how we transfer weight from one leg into the other. So you have continuation of movement, that's in the ground there. Now working your hip joint, and at the same time this can be a very good base for kicking this knee. <coughs> You're going like this with figure eight, see? This and that. This way, that way. 
Because this is usually the familiar to see. But this is another way of kicking, which is very, very good. And it loosens up your kick joints.
from standing position as soon as you touch your hook and then you go cap, crank. Okay? The same principle you can do in any car too. As soon as your left touch, just train yourself. As soon as you touch it, then you have advantage. If you're on this side, you do the same thing. Cap, crank. Just it will open. See? As soon as you touch here, cap, crank. Okay. Now, we're going for another uh, simple takedown. This is usually used when there's a little distance. When he has one leg forward, like, let's say that leg forward. This forward, right forward. Right. Like if you go going with punch, for example. If you touch this shoulder, or for that matter, go here, and use this figure, everybody do this. Leading with top. Then because I'm going now with cross body pretty long distance here, you're tapping with the uh, top of your foot into this movement. See? In one way forward, or in ground, if I remember. You're going. So this movement can be hidden. It doesn't have to show. Or you can run through like this, just to touch and release energy. But not to make complicated, you go like this, because you can start here, but basic movement like that, you see? And then, same movement can follow up and, and touch on top. Because the impression goes down very big, you know, and just little cash will go over. Try it. So this figure is leading this fall. <laughs> You can touch, but it 
not really necessary. But if you go for this side again, you see front body, back body, left side, right side, upper and down at the same time. Squeeze here or go for this. See, it doesn't take much because of all this polarities that you're working at the same time. Okay? This is the figure I'm talking about. How? In. And you tap right here. Depending on how you can be higher too. There are some ways also picking, picking more. If he was a little shorter, picking the kidney. But this is sufficient. Yeah? Already we can go on. You just add a little bit. Sneak in. Okay. That case okay, is a little more better again when he gets front leg forward and you hook it this way and pull towards you and reverse it. Okay? So movement looks like this. This is figure eight. Okay? See, I charge up here. You just, in this case, just touch, make all the control. But you actually was right in here in the front. So, full in motion like this. With left straight, and then I'm bending this one. Okay? Fingers, acquire these two fingers, 
Now here's the key thing on this move, because this is what people mess up when they teach this at school. They want to do it right here, in front of them. Okay? And we have a simple test that we do. Can Scott tap my shoulder? Boy, he sure can. If you can tap my shoulder and tap me in the face, he sure can. Okay? Nobody does a form or a kata that does this downward counter, though, and it does it two right towards the opponent. It goes to the side. So I want you to make sure one time and one time only, because I don't want any fingers ripped off. But a good turn and really go on the angle that you're supposed to. Yeah. Create this position in your person. Because people who have this type of move in their kata, what angle do you step on now from this move to do your rising block? What's 45? Into wherever you want to go. You want more of a grapple. Even for that matter, you want to go into some type of control position like this. They have to be the same. So I'd like you to take those two moves, get a partner, play with them a little bit. Key things, if I miss, well, I can recover here. This is the key pressure point for this lock. Having the palm here is what's key in exposing it. I'm more concerned about that if I can get large intestine to go apart. That's great. Get my fire metal shooting across the hand. But, oops, it's not a perfect work. Now, I cheated a couple different ways. I got this hand in here to keep it from slipping off, and I sort of punched it with this hand. Sorry. But, you know, be aware that that's in there. That's part of great world recovery. Second thing, just get a feel for this hold, but get a feel for doing the full step at least once to see how you can move the person. Okay? And the more small circle wrist action you put, the single most critical thing in this technique, really it's a family of techniques, there's a lot of things you can do from here, is that his palm is up and it's on the line with the center line. Okay? I'm going to hopefully not insult anybody's intelligence here, but stay, stay here. So when I, when I say center line, because it's a term that's thrown around in martial arts a lot, so I'm going to tell you what I mean when I say center line. We're talking right now about this imaginary line that goes right down the center of his body. In other words, the governor and conception meridian sort of trace the center line of the body. Okay? So, if it helps, we're going to put the palm, because we're working in this area, to the conception meridian. Okay? If that helps you, you visualize it. Okay? Second thing, when we're doing the reverse two finger, it's, it becomes a cross hand hold. Okay? If I try to do it uh, here, it does, I don't, I don't create the platform with my hand that I need to have. See how he, he sort of can counter that. I don't have what I need, but if I come in here, what's really happening if I turn it over, though you wouldn't really do the technique leaning over backwards like this, see how this finger hooks the knuckle on his pinky? Okay, Mr. Dillon's talked to us a lot about keeping and weakening the hand. If he brings the pinky on the inside, he's very strong. I can move the pinky to the outside, I weaken it. Okay. If he's sweaty and we're really going at it, it's pretty easy for me to miss the pinky. But what I found works extremely well. If I can hook that knuckle and roll it around, the pinky has to follow. Okay. I don't have to look at him to bring him down. I don't even have to control the pinky as long as I control that knuckle. He's right there. Or anything like that. Don't hold him as loose, obviously, but get him right there. Notice that that kind of tracks also towards the center line of his body, and then it moves past it as I expose his back. The cool thing about getting him here, you can go into whatever you want to do from here. I'd like you to be able to relate it to your kata, because that way you'll have it when you leave. That's real important. But it's very hard for him to hurt me from here. It, believe me, he's in enough pain, he's not going to do a triple flying spinning kick with a twist. <laughs> he, he can't spin on me with the elbow, and I've got. If you're a bigger person with, with bigger hands, working with a smaller person, what will actually happen, you'll, you'll cover over the pressure point, and then with a lot of the, the grappling moves, the, the actual size of your hand will keep the joint from moving where it needs to move. So you just have to modify that. So I'm going to do this move on Lexi, and my hands aren't huge, but they're bigger than hers. Well, I come down like this, and I'm trying, but I'm, I'm muscling her, and you see how she's not in any pain. She just kept on stepping around. And, if we apply my shoulder tap test, she's not even messing around with tapping my shoulder, she's just going to cold tap. 
So what do I do? I take a couple fingers out of the equation. Okay. She moves there. Is it as dramatic as I would get and say someone jacks size? No, but you know, work. Size, size helps too, guys. It's, am I going to do a big upwards movement here to finish her? No. The so moves going to be different because of the difference in size of body. But all I'm doing, I'm still looking. I'm not using this finger now. I'm using this finger, <coughs> hooking behind the knuckle. So I'm really, I'm just floating, essentially, the thumb and the, the middle finger. Obviously, in real, you're not going to stick all these other fingers out like this because that's an invitation to a counter. So you want them not out like an invitation, but you also don't. You don't want smothering here. I mean, here I can squeeze the hand. So I want to just relax, tension the two fingers. She's right there. And then in her case, I just want to go to a different type of hole altogether. So like this, where I can mirror. And because again, we've got the camera going, and do I necessarily want to be waffling someone? Professor Remy Priestess always talks about it, it's very important when you get together with a group of people to study and to share. It's important that you make connections between what you're doing and what they're doing between the different things you do. So here's a, a pretty cool connection that I just saw as I was trying to explain this. See how my name is here? See how all I'm doing is the hard point here is actually the pivot. I'm under it. I'm over it. I'm under it. I'm over it. So here we're into the center line here. Over here. So, for people who are having a little bit of trouble trying to come directly here, just shoot through. You can almost think like you're trying to punch to your opponent's hip, and then you're going to set and swoop through. So, I'm going to punch and swoop through. I'm going to take that little staggered step, and you know, if my person's real flexible, and I think I'm maybe not going to be able to control here, I'm just going to push her. Take down right there. She's right down. What, now, what I'm looking for right here, again, this is because of what I do. The hands are controlled. That's the most important thing to me. I can see that her hands are empty. Anchor this, roll this out, and we're just starting to ease into a handcuffing position now. I haven't hit her. Even though we're on camera, we don't look that bad. <laughs> <laughs> relatively, relatively speaking, gang. <laughs> 